super excited for the video today and a big part of it is this right here. These are old issues of Bike Magazine from the late 90s, early 2000s. So all of these covers have something in common. And that something in common is now something that my good friends at Jensen just brought in house. And part of why I get to do this video is because everyone's super excited to make a big announcement. Many of you know, I've had a long relationship with IBIS. I ride their bikes in half my videos and they sponsor three standalone videos for 2020 on my channel. But today we've got a bike from a whole new brand. I've never ever ridden one of their bikes before. And they've entrusted me with a brand new models coming out. Do have a link down to the listing for all this at Jensen where you can learn more of the proper detail. Check that out in the description below. Anything you purchase from Jensen will help keep us making videos, will support us. Look at this, brand new bike for my pals over at Rocky Mountain. Awesome. growing up just seeing all the footage of Rocky Mountain. Just look at that. I believe he's on a Slayer. That could even be Richie Schley. I think he's on the Slayer, airing it out there. Home skillet's on, I think it's an altitude or an element. That's gotta be a Slayer. That's got with a linkage plate. I got one word for ya. Linkage plates. So Richie Schley in Santa Cruz, my hometown. I think that's Wilder Ranch, Zane Gray Trail. Let's start popping this box open and see what we got. Hey, that's my name. All righty. Oh, sick. Nice. I guess we should start digging into this. Thank you, Rocky. I'm always stoked to see WTB saddles. I used to work at WTB and I still ride their stuff. It's like a Volt 142, one of my favorite saddles. Oh. It might not be Canadian, but I can certainly appreciate a red, nice red maple leaf on a top tube. That looks good. I really like putting bikes all the way together from scratch because you tend to learn a lot about a bike if you're building it the whole way. In this case, I'm not gonna take it apart just to put it back together. I'm gonna ride it. You could just picture a little dude dropping in right there on his altitude. It's a good looking bike. What do you think this bike's gonna weigh? Um, no pedals. I'm guessing 31 and a half. 30. 33 and 31 and a half. Tear it out. Whoa, you were close. I guess 31 and a half, you guess 33. Oh, and the scale has stopped, 32.5. I've always really admired Rocky Mountain and with one of their brand new bikes on hand and at my disposal, I use this as a great excuse to go out and ride some really cool spots and make some fun videos with my buddy Logan. First, we rode it at some trails close to home in Bellingham, Washington. This is the very first ride I had on the new Altitude C90 Rally Edition. This is a full XTR equipped bike. It uses 29 inch wheels, a 170 millimeter travel Fox 38 fork in front. The rear end uses a Fox Flow X2 rear shock and cycles 160 millimeters of travel. The Rocky Mountain is an especially interesting bike because it uses the Ride 9 technology, which is a series of flip chips that create nine possible configurations, which will vary the bike's geometry and the progressivity of the rear suspension. On the first ride, I left it in the stock configuration, which is the most aggressive. Honestly, this was a little too aggressive for this type of riding. Somewhere like the Whistler Bike Park, that stock setup would probably feel really good. However, on my local trails, which are quite a bit tighter and slower than true bike park stuff, I was not really even able to bottom the suspension out. However, I'd soon realize that this is actually an advantage in disguise. The bike comes stock with the shorter chainstay option, and for my style of riding, I really like those shorter chainstays. The frame stiffness was really solid. The Fox 38, if anything, was more fork than I need but the rear end had a little bit of give to it in conjunction with the X2, it wasn't sketchy by any means. 
Before heading out to some more shoots, I wanted to dial the bike in just a little bit more back in the shop. I'm preparing for tomorrow. We're gonna go jam out and film on this thing and I wanna make sure my setup's dialed. Big shout out to PNW Components. Those dudes have believed in me since the beginning. Huge thanks to Aaron and Emily. Loam lever. And more importantly, seat post. The new Rainier IR is internally adjustable. It has 200 mils. Ah, oh, travel max. I don't think I can actually fit 200 on here. All right, so it's gonna be very close. Maybe I do a 190 millimeter drop for the seat post rather than the stock 150. If you only can have one upgrade on your bike, most bang for the buck would be new tires. So this is a 2.6 tire combo, but not only is it super worn out, it really measures about 2.5, 2.52. I'm using uh, my sponsor Industry 9's carbon wheel set here, Enduro 315. Dustin Adams up in Kamloops, BC, runs We Are One Composites, and Industry 9 is using them as their rim supplier. That's pretty cool. Ah, and there's two tokens on here, so I'm gonna take one off. And hopefully it's just a tad more linear, and I might do the same for the rear of this bike. I've been thinking about moving the shock forwards a little bit to further steepen the head angle, removing a volume reducer in the rear shock. I don't think I'm gonna be riding a lot of flow trails on this guy. Going back country. With Ibis bikes, usually I'm frantically adding more volume reducers. Same with that Orbea Occam. This guy is the opposite. Either I'm smaller than the average Canadian or I'm sending it less or both. Ah, so we have two. I'll pull one. Now that I've removed volume spacers from the fork and the shock, I'm almost bottoming them when I do like a four foot drop to flat, which probably works pretty good on a trail bike. Cable guide is awesome. Forward shock mount can be changed up a little bit too. Like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to use this bike as an excuse to do some really cool rides. So next up, I wanted to head east, some trails I'd never ridden before in more eastern and central Washington state. First stop was in Leavenworth on a treacherous trail that no one really rides called Icicle Ridge. Indeed, have a good afternoon. So we've gone almost two miles. We've only we've climbed 1,200 feet in two miles. It's not that, that's not too bad. Yeah, the ride's gonna get way easier from here on out. It's just gonna be all shade, breezy, not as steep, more traction, more rideable. It's just gonna get really easy. Right, Dad. This is a really good trail for that bike because of that crazy steep seat angle, this crazy steep hill. It like works out pretty good. I never measured it, but it feels steeper than the Ibis. I have a three and a half year old daughter and I really enjoy taking her on daddy daughter campouts. Recently, we went and camped at Catches Lake and had a fantastic time. I really wanted to ride the Catches Ridge Trail, which is like the easiest of all the backcountry routes I've seemed to have found here in Washington state. Well, I didn't want to ride that trail with my kid on the Mac ride on the front of the bike, but I figured this altitude was gonna be a great excuse to head out and finally do this ride. I feel like this is the kind of riding where the Rocky Mountain is really in its element, no pun intended with their model name. The amount of suspension really soaks up the pretty technical, gnarly, just raw and rugged backcountry descents. And then the steeper climbing geometry works great on the long fire road access climbs. I found myself surprised at how much I enjoyed having 203 rotors front and rear. That was pretty darn cool when it needed to slow down in a hurry and I've been going downhill for a couple thousand feet. I was glad to have the extra drop of the PNW Components dropper seat post. The 2.6 size tires that actually measure 2.5 were also a great fit for this terrain. And yes, I do have a relationship with WTB. Everyone say thanks to Logan for filming. Oh, I'm doing my uh, wrap up on the Rocky Mountain. 
So currently, I can definitely bottom the bike out with a big funky hit, but I'm riding mostly backcountry stuff, like that ridge right there. And it felt spot on, very appropriate. The seat tube angle is crazy steep compared to the Ripmo. It's like maybe two or three degrees steeper, which is nice on the fire road, but on the really technical stuff, as your seat angle gets steeper, you end up getting higher above the ground. So I noticed two things. One, it was harder to balance at low speeds with that steeper seat angle. And two, I didn't, I was able to roll over things. I would get caught up on a little easier. I think that's an effect of having the weight so high up above the ground. So I don't think it's bottom bracket height. I think it's seat tube angle related, but that could also just be me not used to it after only eight or so days on the bike. I didn't have really many problems at all with the bike. It's very quiet when you're riding. Really the only issue I had was the lower main pivot shaft loosened up about three quarters of a turn. Something feels a little off. Sorry. No, the frame is loose. Lower main pivot shaft. Oh, it's accessible from this side. Nice. Of course, you had to say that bike's really quiet. Well, it's still quiet for a bit. That is loose. Yeah, I was like, jeez. And that was just five seconds, tighten her back down. Everything's stayed put. So that was easy. Big shout out to Jensen USA for making this happen. Jensen is now an online retailer for Rocky Mountain Bicycles here in the USA. I have a link in the YouTube description below over to the Rocky Mountain page at Jensen. And anything you purchase from Jensen will directly help support my channel. I gotta refilm all this again for my office, but this is way more scenic than sitting in an office. All right, Logan and I gotta load up, go barge through downtown Seattle traffic and make our way back to Bellingham. So thanks for hanging out, everyone's been fun. Click that red subscribe button. Let me know in the comments, what are your dream spots to ride in Washington outside of the usual Galbraith, Duthie, Beacon Hill? What else is there? Let me know. I'd love to find some cool backcountry routes like this. Palisades Trail, this reminds me a lot of Cassius Ridge here. All right, guys, it's been fun. See you later.